everybody. My name is Shauna, and this is the American English Podcast. My goal here is to teach you the English spoken in the United States through common expressions, pronunciation tips, and interesting cultural snippets or stories. I hope to keep this fun, useful, and interesting. Let's do it. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I am curious. Have you ever heard a story about a magician making a rabbit disappear? Have you ever seen it? Maybe you've read a novel, perhaps a mystery, where a character disappears and nobody knows what happened to them. These scenarios perfectly illustrate our expression of the day, which is to vanish into thin air. To vanish into thin air conjures images of something or someone disappearing suddenly and completely, almost like magic. But where did this phrase come from? And why do we use it to describe such mysterious disappearances? Join me today as we explore the origins, usage, and intriguing examples of how to use this idiom in real life contexts. Hope you guys can hear well. I'm using a different microphone today because my mic broke on the way back from Brazil. So yeah, we'll have to see. Anyway, be sure to stay tuned for next week's episode, which is about the world famous magician, Harry Houdini. I've been wanting to tell his story and talk about his magic for a long time now. I promise you it'll be an exciting episode full of descriptions and explanations of challenging words. And of course, it'll have you on the edge of your seat. Be sure to stay tuned for part two. It'll be posted shortly. Let's begin today's episode. As usual, we'll start with a joke. And this joke in particular is one for little kids. Are you ready? How do you make a tissue dance? Any idea? You put a little boogie in it. (laughs) All right. So if you're not familiar with the word tissue, a tissue is a soft, thin piece of paper or fabric used to blow your nose. If you have a runny nose or boogers, you should probably get some tissues. In American English, we also call this Kleenex. That's the name of a popular tissue brand. So we'll just use that in place of tissues. Can you get me some Kleenex, please? And in this joke, the humor comes from making a tissue dance. There is wordplay here. Boogie has two meanings. Boogie refers to a type of dance or music. It's often associated with lively rhythmic movements. But boogie is also a slang term. It's a small piece of dried mucus in someone's nose. (laughs) It's a shortened form of booger. Ew, get a tissue. There's a booger or a boogie hanging out of your nose. Boogie makes me laugh. It's a sort of funny term. Now, when someone asks, how do you make a tissue dance? It sets up the expectation that the answer is going to be something creative related to dancing. But the punchline plays on both meanings. You put a little boogie in it, suggests that adding a boogie, the dance move, would make the tissue dance, while also implying that putting a boogie, the mucus, in the tissue would make it dance. It's a double entendre. Let's hear the joke one more time. How do you make a tissue dance? You put a little boogie in it. And my daughters will definitely enjoy that. Hope you did too. Let's move on to the expression of the day We'll go through the individual words first. And once again, the expression is to vanish into thin air. Now, to vanish means to disappear suddenly and completely. 
the magician made the coin vanish right before our eyes. Into expresses movement or action with the result of someone or something being enclosed or surrounded by something else. The cat crawled into the small box and fell asleep. Thin means having little thickness or depth. The ice on the pond was too thin to support their weight, so they stayed off it. And air is the invisible gaseous substance surrounding the earth, a mixture mainly of oxygen and nitrogen. The room felt stuffy, so we opened a window to let in some fresh air. Now, to vanish into thin air is an English idiom that means to disappear suddenly and completely, leaving no trace behind. So it's similar to the verb to vanish, but it gives this sort of mysterious element to it. Why did this thing disappear? It's like it evaporated or it disintegrated. It just, poof, it's gone. So what's the origin? The phrase comes from Shakespeare's play Othello, which was written in the early 1600s. In one scene, Othello says, go, vanish into air, away. In other words, leave, disappear, be gone. Over time, this idea turned into the idiom we use today, of course, meaning that something or someone is disappearing completely and mysteriously. Now, witches and wizards at Hogwarts always vanish into thin air because they're doing magic. One second, they're in the room. The next, poof, they're gone. They vanish into thin air. Let's go through some examples of how to use this expression in everyday contexts. Example number one. Do you know Atlantis? Atlantis is a legendary island mentioned by the ancient Greek philosopher Plato. It was said to be a powerful and advanced civilization. And it's also said that in the midst of a catastrophic event, Atlantis sank beneath the waves. Today, scholars and adventurers search for evidence of its existence. But it seems as though Atlantis simply vanished into thin air. In other words, it mysteriously disappeared without a trace to be found. Now, it's not as common for places to disappear, but people, of course, you'll hear this expression used to talk about criminals, thieves, murderers. We can use this expression dramatically to, you know, kind of say, hey, we have no idea where they went. They vanished into thin air. Which brings me to example number two. You know Sherlock Holmes, right? The famous fictional detective. He's known for his sharp deductive skills and ability to follow clues or traces to solve mysteries. Now imagine this. One day, Sherlock Holmes is in the heart of London and he's walking down narrow, foggy streets in hot pursuit of a jewel thief. Jewels, as you may know, are precious stones like rubies, diamonds, sapphires, and emeralds. Sherlock Holmes needs to catch the jewel thief, the person who stole these jewels. Now, just as he sees the thief turn into an alley, Holmes runs after him. But when he rounds the corner, or when he goes around the corner, he finds the alley completely empty. The thief seems to have vanished into thin air. He's mysteriously disappeared. Example number three. At the Grand Magic Show, the audience watched in awe as the magician performed his final trick. He placed a white rabbit into a top hat and with a dramatic flourish and an abracadabra, 
the rabbit seemed to dissolve before their eyes. The crowd gasped, <gasps> for the rabbit had truly vanished into thin air. It disappeared, mysteriously and completely. So this expression is not rocket science. It isn't really challenging. So you may have understood it even before me going through these examples. But once again, to vanish means to disappear. And when we say something vanishes into thin air, it's mysterious, as if it evaporated or turned into dust. There is a sense of mystery of what happened to that person, place, or thing. To be honest, I sometimes feel that my cell phone and the TV remote vanish into thin air. One minute they're in my hand, and the next they're nowhere to be found. Lucas likes to remind me that these physical objects don't vanish into thin air and that I'm responsible for misplacing them. But I still think there must be some little goblin or creature in my house stealing them from time to time. Or maybe it's just my daughter's. Let's move on to the pronunciation exercise. Today we'll use the statement, my phone keeps vanishing into thin air. Repeat after me, my phone, my phone keeps, my phone keeps vanishing, my phone keeps vanishing into thin air. The statement is so dramatic, uh, so you can be dramatic too. My phone keeps vanishing into thin air. What's happening? Uh, and the conjugation, we're going to do the present perfect today. Repeat after me. I've vanished into thin air. You've vanished into thin air. She's vanished into thin air. He's vanished into thin air. It's vanished into thin air. We've vanished into thin air. They've vanished into thin air. There are a few different ways I could pronounce the example sentences I just gave. If I were speaking clearly or slowly, you'd hear that T sound at the end of vanished. I've vanished into thin air. However, when I'm speaking casually to friends or at a normal speed, these spoken words are linked. They flow together. They're connected. I've vanished into thin air. Thin air sounds like one word. Thin air, thin air. And that ED ending on vanished connects to the vowel that follows. They've vanished into thin air. Now, what's awesome is that any regular past tense verb followed by a vowel will sound like a D. So, for example, I changed into nice clothes. I changed into nice clothes. You hear how that ED ending connects into into? I changed into. I changed into nice clothes. Or I waited a while at the bar. I waited a while at the bar. The ED ending on waited connects with the A that follows. I waited a while at the bar. I've vanished into thin air. Turns into... I've vanished into thin air. I've vanished into thin air. All right. So once again, I'd like for you to pay attention to linking. In other words, how words are connected in sentences. What letters do we eat? In other words, which letters do we get rid of? And how pronunciation changes when one letter follows another. The thing is with learning reduced forms and linking is that it can drastically help not just with your pronunciation, but comprehension as well, because 
They're the foundation of fast spoken English. By learning them, they'll help you understand your favorite TV shows, your favorite podcasts. And so I will do more episodes like this in the future where I focus on these aspects of American pronunciation. Right now, don't stress, enjoy your evening, and stay tuned for next week's episode, which will be all about the great Houdini. I'm very excited about it. Stay tuned for that. Oh, one last thing. I came back from Brazil not too long ago, and I went to the post office, and I can't tell you how happy I was to open my mailbox. You guys are the best. You sent me letters from all over the world, many from Germany, from Brazil, from Japan. Thank you so much to everyone who sent me postcards. You made me so, so happy. And for those of you who would like to send me a postcard, I will be sure to post the address in the episode notes. And you can also find it on my Instagram. I will be posting pictures of some of the postcards shortly. Hope you have a nice day. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the American English Podcast. Remember, it's my goal here to not only help you improve your listening comprehension, but to show you how to speak like someone from the States. If you want to receive the full transcript for this episode, or you just want to support this podcast, make sure to sign up to premium content on AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. Thanks and hope to see you soon.